Welcome everyone! In this video we will look at the relations between biophysical water productivity and the biomass, the yield and the water consumption. Then we will identify opportunities to improve biophysical water productivity. As you know by now, there are two ways to increase biophysical water productivity either by increasing biomass or yield while at the same time maintaining water consumption stable or even decrease it, or by reducing the water consumption while at the same time maintaining or even increasing biomass or yield production. Looking at the first way to increase biophysical water productivity, there is limited scope for improvements. Regarding biomass increases, there is a linear relation between water consumption and biomass production. In other words, the more the water consumption, the higher the biomass production, as you can see in the figure. As such, there, is limited, there are limited options to increase biomass production while maintaining the water consumption. Optimal fertility management could potentially shift the curve of water productivity to higher levels. However, improvements in fertility have reached the limits, especially in irrigated agriculture. In rain-fed agriculture, fertility improvements might still be possible, but they come at the risk of exacerbating water stress. This is because improved fertility will lead to higher biomass production that demands more water, pronouncing potential water stress. Looking at increases in yield through increases in harvest index, opportunities unfortunately are also limited. Yield increases have been already largely realized during the Green Revolution for cereals. Now looking at the second way to increase biophysical water productivity, thus to decrease water consumption while maintaining or increasing biomass or yield, there is a clear and tangible option, that of deficit irrigation. Normally, irrigation focuses on maximization of production, which is seen in point B in the figure. Deficit irrigation is focused on optimization of productivity, and not of production. In other words, deficit irrigation provides the necessary water for maximum water productivity, which is seen in point C in the figure. Despite the theoretical potential of deficit irrigation, in practice its adoption is limited, mainly due to the high investment costs that are not leading to maximization of economic returns, but water conservation. As such, there are no economic incentives for the adoption of deficit irrigation. Although hopes in the water community have been high in increasing biophysical water productivity, there is limited scope for this, as we discussed before. Biophysical water productivity is guided and limited by plant process processes which offer limited space for improvement. Opportunities for improving biophysical water productivity lay in developments of new photosynthetic pathways in plant genetics and plant breeding. These developments might allow for increased production without increases in water consumption, or development of crop varieties that are more resilient to water stress. These developments are still in their infancy, and thus improving biophysical water productivity in the long run depends on them. However, substantial scope for improvement can be found in economic water productivity. Growing high value crops, increasing crop prices, reducing production costs, reducing post-harvest losses and increasing storage capacities will lead to higher income per water use. In this video, we have discussed the limited scope 
for improvement in biophysical water productivity. The potential of deficit irrigation and the opportunities that lie in economic water productivity. You can find more details on the agronomic theories behind the relations of biomass yield and water consumption in the material of this module. And to challenge you and test your knowledge, check the assignments. So, good luck everyone and much success!